Hello and welcome to Star Citizen Sunday. This is a weekly show which covers all the news from Star Citizen from the week just past. I am your host, Mac, so let's get on with it. This week, we get a new straight-to-drivable vehicle. The UI team talk about the future of all the UI in the game. Plus, 3.6 goes live. So before we begin, I would just like to say a huge thank you to my latest patrons, El Gordo, Rockseeker and Fanstar. Thank you guys so much for the support and a big thanks to all my patrons as these guys keep me making videos like this. If you'd like to support the channel further, follow the link to my Patreon page below. It is very much appreciated. So 3.6 is finally here. I have linked a couple of posts below which highlight the new features and the new ships and vehicles. Today is really the first day that I'll get to play some, so I'm not sure about its stability, but do let me know what you think of it. Now we just need to get the 890 jump and ship rentals in and the patch will be complete. I feel personally that Star Citizen's persistent universe is definitely coming together now. We are starting to see a more robust light at the end of the tunnel. But as I say, do let me know what your experience is. So on this week's Star Citizen Live, the focus was all about the UI or the user interface. The first question they had was, are the plans to let us customize HUD elements, maybe prioritizing things, resizing things, changing the color of the font? And they said that they need to get the UI into a place that they are happy with and that we are happy with, of course, and then they can start looking into the customization options. There's lots of work going on on the HUD and MFDs and the visor right now, so they will likely incorporate this later on. The next question is, the UI is currently very cluttered with mission markers, turret IDs, ship IDs and so forth. What can be done to make it more user friendly and more diegetic? Now they say they are very interested in looking at this. They're not sure when, but they would like some intelligent system which determines what UI is shown depending on many factors like priorities or proximity to certain things. As the new things got added in the past, the UI came with it and it just clustered everything up so they need to find a better way to display it all. As he said, they're working on MFDs right now and creating a new system which is more systemic. Uh, someone asked about the message spam, so all the mission mark missions that are coming up popping on screen and they say originally it was just a simple notification but as there are so many more missions now it needs to be scaled down and prioritized. They would love to have a turn off switch as well I much prefer just checking the Moby Glass when I want to take a mission on uh, rather than just constantly being told there's a new mission. Obviously, if it's something of, of significant importance or a, a time limit to it, then I don't mind being notified, but I would rather just have it completely turned off until I want to look for a mission. Someone asked about the support for resolutions higher than 1080p, so 21x9 or 32x9 monitors. I know a lot of people who are affected by this uh, they say the UI is authored in a static manner right now. The new method they're working on will allow everything to scale appropriately, so hopefully not too long. Are there plans to add keyboard navigation to various interfaces that we have, like the MFDs, for example? And they say, yes, having keyboard navigation makes things a lot easier. And as they begin to implement the updated MFDs, they will likely add keyboard navigation options as well, which is very useful. Someone asked what the progress on the new UI system is. And they say they're in the transitional phase right now. Uh, they're moving away from using Flash. The new system is fully data driven and basically any programmer can add the UI variables that they need. So if someone's programmed in a weapon, they can just click up these variables and add an ammo counter when hooking it up. It also updates things instantly and live so you can literally see the progress. It sounds like it's going to really reduce the time it takes to get UI and it's Super important for the future development of Star Citizen, for, for sure. Uh, someone asked about maybe adding a compass ribbon to the bottom of your screen so you can see what direction you're pointing in. Now, he did say it doesn't have to be a compass. It can have other methods, like maybe a mini-map or a personal radar. But as they revise the HUD uh, and a compass is needed, they will then investigate it. This question always comes up, and obviously a compass will be imperative, in my opinion. Uh, but they do need to investigate the best method for using it. And it isn't just a UI question. It requires so much more work. Basically understanding the planet you're on, making sure the planets have poles. When you're not on a planet, how will it transition between them? It isn't a simple addition, uh, but don't worry about it. I'm pretty sure we will get something eventually. Next question is to do with maybe a button to hide the full HUD. 
uh, you, you know, mainly for taking photographs. And they said, yes, it's definitely something they want to bring in. Like the question where they said they want to employ some logic so it determines what is shown on your HUD, not just everything. So, for example, if you then put your weapon away, your ammo counter will disappear from the UI. Or maybe only seeing your health pop up when you get injured. Now, as I say, they, they kind of say they want to take the HUD away to take screenshots to make things look pretty. But I want it to be realistic to the point that when you're not wearing a helmet, you have literally no HUD. Uh, and they use everything diegetically. So similar to Dead Space, when you have a spacesuit on, this will show your, your health, and if you get hit, it'll decrease the health bar on your spacesuit. If you're not wearing a spacesuit, maybe it could just be a visual aid, like blood on the screen or redness. I would like to get away from the idea of a hood being there, unless you maybe purchase a contact lens. I don't know if that's going to be the case. That's just my personal opinion. I do hope they take that direction, though. Next question is to do with the chat UI. Can we have it when not wearing a helmet? And they say, yes, there is a plan to have it so that even when you're in third person, you can have the chat appear. Obviously, it's a multiplayer game. They want chat to be there. As long as they have the option to turn it off, um, I'll be happy with that. Someone asked about this 3D minimap that we, we saw a little while ago. What's the latest on it? Now, they said that they have got a development version, which is about halfway done, but they decided to get ship and player hoods done first then look at the area map stuff later on, which does make sense. It's about prioritizing tasks. Uh, why do all the ship HUD submodes like scanning, quantum travel, mining, and so forth, take away crucial flight information like your speed and altitude? They said that the new design will factor in all the information that you need uh, and will be available to you regardless of what mode you're in. They are planning to contextually change out the screens rather than the HUD, so your MFDs will display more information rather than just cluttering up the HUD, which I much prefer. It is, again, diegetic. It's in the game, not just on your fake HUD. Someone asked about the plans for landing UI. Obviously, with the new hover mode, people are struggling. We need more information on landing. Uh, and they say that the focus on structure and layout of the MFDs now and what will be displayed. So landing UI and the AR guidance system is something they will work on, but again, priorities. Although I must say it is quite a high priority for a lot of us. Are they planning to improve the UI for varied environments like glare and brightness? And they say they want the solutions to be more in-world rather than just dropping a drop shadow on, on the UI. So basically having the UI dynamically adjust the brightness to the environment. There are plans to get the HUDs displayed on actual visible geometry, like a plane of glass, rather than just randomly floating in the air, which grounds it to the world better. And this means that they can adjust the tint and so forth of the geometry, which should help improve it. And this is probably one of my favorite points of the whole game is that they're, they're gonna bring in, so it, it is on an actual piece of equipment in the ship rather than just floating HUD. Same with your visor on your helmet, I guess. Will we be able to have MFD configuration presets? And they say, yes, it will eventually persist. It just doesn't right now. The refactoring of the ship MFDs will have a more minimized display. So showing only what you need to know with a legible font size when you're sat in your cockpit. And then when you zoom in on the screen, it can contextually change to present you with more information. So sort of spread out and give you more info rather than it just being so tiny when you're sat normally in your seat, uh, which is a good update. Someone asked about cargo UI. Will we get it right now? The kiosk shows the inventory. There are no ways of checking your inventory while in your ship. And they say, yes, that, that should be in and they will look into it, but they're not sure when it's going to happen. Same kind of goes for the missiles and torpedoes. We used to be able to tick up which missiles we wanted to fire first and prioritize them. They said that the UI does support this, but a little refactor is needed, so it will come back. Again, same goes for different points of interest in other modes, not just quantum travel mode. So being able to see where everything is located without having to go into quantum travel mode. Again, looking at that later. And the same for an ETA marker. So your time to arrival while in quantum travel. They said it's a good idea and they will add that to the list. Now, someone asked if the inner thought system is where they want it to be or if there's any updates coming to it. And they say they want to get away from having the inner thought everywhere. So if a panel has a button that sort of says, you know, press here to rotate the airlock, then they will likely remove the inner thought and just have it diegetic. Now, I personally love this idea, and I think all interactions should be on screens similar to the sort of 
box drop off lockers that we have where you literally just press a button and then boom it works. Not sure if it's going to be intuitive enough though but that's how I would prefer it. Second to last question is to do with manufacturer specific UI. Is this still the plan? And they say yes definitely and it's more possible now with the new tech. They'll be able to just select from a drop down say RSI or origin and it'll change all the variables of that UI very quickly when they set up the ships. Origin MISC will also have more of a holographic UI with 3D elements to it which sort of project out. Now this makes me wonder if we'll ever be able to purchase from stores uh, in-game a design, maybe a retro design or a holographic design or even a themed design like maybe if you really really love Star Kitten or Big Benny's you could get that style of UI for your MFDs. Just a thought, I think it would be nice for further customization. I'd love to know your thoughts on that. And the final question is to do with the Moby Glass. What is happening with this? Is it where you want it to be? What's, is there any changes coming? And they say they do plan to overhaul the Moby Glass, but it's not the focus right now. Anyway, that was the UI Star Citizen Live. Very good episode there. Some really interesting information. And Jared did say he will try and bring more of a focused look at what they've been working on so we can see the progress. Very excited to see the UI change. I think it will change the game drastically when the UI becomes a little more intuitive, maybe more diegetic rather than just hovering over your face all the time. Anyway, do let me know your thoughts, guys. Let's move on. So also this week, there was a new showdown post titled Cornerstone, which I am yet to read. Plus, the Anvil Ballista is released, which is a ground air defense system capable of obliterating pretty much anything within two kilometers. I have covered this in a separate video with some actual footage. Thank you, OPR Coder. The link to that video can be found in the description below. So that brings us to the end of the show. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a video. Hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed it and share the video with all your friends. If you like what I do and want to help me make it better, follow the link below to my Patreon page to learn more.